So today is a very exciting day for me because my 16 inch MacBook Pro just showed up and we're gonna just open this thing up and get it going. If you guys have been watching this channel, you'll know that I've been traveling quite a bit lately. Right, honestly, I, I edit everything on my iMac at home. So it's been a really challenge to try to get any of my stuff done while I'm constantly on the road. So because this thing is a portable laptop, I can just throw this thing in my backpack and we can edit videos like while I'm at a hotel or on the road or on an airplane, which is gonna be a huge game changer in my workflow, not always having to be home to edit my videos. So in today's video, we're gonna open this thing up, get it all unboxed, uh, and then I'm gonna show you some of the accessories that I bought for home so that when I am here I can actually just set it up like a desktop uh, but first and foremost let's get this thing open so this is kind of one of my favorite parts about Apple products is that they always have the nice kind of unboxing experience so let's just get this thing open oh that always feels good to pull those tabs So I opted for the 16 inch MacBook Pro in the slight gray. Uh, this is a one terabyte SSD with a 16 gig memory, um, the M1 chip, of course. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna be all I'm gonna need for my setup. Uh, I think it's gonna handle that A7S 3 422 10 bit footage just fine, including in the 120 frames per second. So anyways, let's get this thing open here. Let's get the box top off. Let's see, uh, this is the fun part here, letting the, the thing fall off. It's always satisfying. As you can see here, it comes in a nice little paper here. You lift this thing up. Ooh, this thing's got a little bit of weight to it. It's actually not so bad. Um, a lot of people kept on saying this thing's kind of got a heavy weight to it, uh, but really, it, I don't think it's that bad. Let's set that aside for a second because that'll be the fun one to open. So in the box, you get the Design by Apple California. Open up the thing here. You're gonna have probably all your warranty information, um, all your user manuals. And there's one thing that this one comes with that's different than most of the other Mac products, because this is a Pro line, you're gonna get the black stickers. If I can get anything out of here. So you get black stickers. So once again, I'm probably just gonna leave this in the uh, in the box because I never use them anyways, but it's kind of cool they changed things up a little bit there. All right, so in here you have the charging brick for the computer. This is the 140 watt version. So this is gonna be kind of a quick charge for it. It's a USB-C. Let's get this thing all ripped open here. This thing's kind of heavy, I feel like. Um, I'm not sure if there's really many third-party options yet that's going to be as good as this, but uh, for now, we're gonna use this huge brick. Normally, I like to switch on my MacBooks to kind of like those Anchor products, because they're smaller and they work just good. But you have the uh, power brick there. And then in the back here, you have the MagSafe cable. This thing's kind of a nice cable. It's, it's like a braided cable, so it's not gonna get all crappy like those old ones did, where they just fall apart. Right, so let's open these tabs here. Does anyone else actually open these things carefully or do you just rip them open? I tend to just usually rip them open. So this will be your MagSafe plug, which is the USB-C. So if you want to charge from the side, it's gonna be MagSafe. Uh, you can charge this MacBook too using just a USB-C cable but you will need some kind of high powered plug for that. Uh, but it's kind of nice that they're going back to this because it is going to free open another slot for the USB-C. Um, I don't think there's anything else in the bottom of this thing, so this is pretty much just a box at this point. So let's move that aside. Okay, so this is going to be some kind of recycled paper, it sounds like. On the bottom here, you can see that it says Get that off to the side. So at the bottom of the computer, you have kind of a nice engraving that says MacBook Pro. You have these kind of plastic feet on it that uh, sits up a little higher. It looks like on the back, you have a nice little port that's gonna be good for the exhaust fans. Uh, and on the front, you have uh, kind of a bigger Apple logo than was been on the previous ones. Yeah, this isn't really that heavy. Everyone keeps saying it's this thing's heavy. Maybe I'm just not used to having many MacBooks. My 13 inch MacBook is pretty light, but I mean, it's a 13 inch, so. So I believe when we open this thing up here, it's gonna just start, uh, it's gonna power on and turn on. Let's get this paper off. So for me, because I'm coming from my other iMac, I'm actually gonna set this thing up by doing 
kind of a transfer of everything that's on here into this one. So I'm not gonna set this thing up just yet, but uh, as you can see, the screen here says hello, it's turning on. This thing is a gorgeous screen. Pretty much looking at the size of the screen, I I'm glad I went with the 16 inch because I wouldn't want this any smaller than this. Like I know this thing is gonna be kind of tough to edit when you're on like an airplane because it is taking up more real estate on your little tiny tray that you're already gonna get. Uh, but like sitting in a hotel or sitting anywhere else, I feel like this screen is like the bare minimum size that I would wanna use to edit on. But I also do say that because I do come from a 27 inch iMac where I'm used to a 27 inch screen. All right, so looking at the top of the laptop here, it looks like you have this all black keyboard now. Uh, none of that gray and black stuff. It's just kind of all contrasting from the sides. I'm a little surprised that the slate gray is actually a little bit lighter than I thought it was going to be, uh, but it still looks really sweet. You can get this also in silver. The speakers on this computer are also really good. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna try to show you a test because that's pointless to do with a mono mic. It also looks like that Apple got rid of the touch bar, which I couldn't stand on the other computers. Uh, some people like them, I personally don't. It also has a touch ID, so now you don't have to type in your passwords anymore, which is gonna be really cool. Uh, but yeah, this thing looks looks great. The screen is awesome. So it wasn't just the laptop that I purchased. I actually bought a bunch of accessories so that when I am actually at home editing, I can just plug this thing in over here to one cable and then have all my accessories ready to go. Everything hooked up to its own monitor, keyboard, mouse. And we'll go over a couple of those today as well. So monitor wise, what I'm gonna be pairing with this laptop is actually an LG 4K IPS monitor, which I think it's gonna look really good with this thing. It's a 32 inch, so it's a little bigger than that Apple display. Uh, I just didn't wanna spend $1,600 on an Apple display when there's other monitors out there that look just as good. So for the keyboard, I did pick up the Logitech MX keys. Uh, it's a keyboard that a lot of people use. It's a really nice keyboard as well. And it kind of just fits the slate gray look to everything. So for the mouse I'm gonna use, I actually picked this up a while ago, but it's the MX Master 3 mouse. Uh, also in the slate gray for Mac. It took me a little bit to get used to this because I was a big fan of the Apple mouse or the Magic Mouse. But now that I got this thing completely set up with all my shortcuts and kind of like custom buttons, um, I, I don't know how I'm gonna edit without this mouse because I can just zoom through everything with cuts and deleting stuff all on my mouse, which is great. So on the left side of the computer here, we have the MagSafe port, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So if we flip it over to the other side, we also have a dedicated HDMI cable, which is gonna be good for pairing for a monitor. Uh, we have another Thunderbolt 4 cable, and then we also have back a SD card reader, which is going to be a huge thing to have back. Uh, so this way you won't have to use dongles and everything. But with that said, I did actually pick up the Thunderbolt 4 hub from OWC. So this powered hub will actually give me three different Thunderbolt 4 cable plugins, another 3.2 USB cable. So the main purpose I picked this up is so that I can actually have all my SSD cards plugged straight to this. And then when I get home, I can just plug my laptop straight into this and I'm ready to go. So being that this is a Thunderbolt 4 hub, this thing's gonna be perfect so I won't have any loss of speed on any of my drives. Plus also this is kind of a slight gray so it's gonna match everything as well. And just in case you're wondering what this is, this is from Anchor. It allows you to connect a network cable to your USB-C in case you don't wanna use Wi-Fi and just go hardwired instead. So I did pick up one last thing for this MacBook Pro and there are these cool skins from uh, Fish Skin. I haven't put them on just yet, but they do look really cool and they're gonna help protect just the bottom and the top of it for when I'm like throwing it in my bag and stuff. So, all right, so if you have any questions on this MacBook Pro or any of these accessories that I'm kind of pairing with it, leave me a comment down below, I'll get back to you. Uh, if you'd like to see like a full studio tour desk setup, uh, also leave me a comment down below on that. While you're down there, if you could hit that like button, subscribe to this channel, and as always guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.